What was the best, you have no power here, moment you have ever seen. I taught my 6th grade students about democratic processes, and we ran a simulation. Without fail, every one of my classes tried to impeach me. We had an HR lady who was extremely power hungry. She is walking around with the president of the company who flew in from Japan. She rushes him though the warehouse. Just spits out, oh these are the warehouse guys we don't have to stop and talk to them. He stops walks over and starts talking to me about my last vacation. How buying my house went. You could just see her fuming behind him as we talked for almost 45 minutes. I've had multiple meeting with him we knew each other really well. I don't think he liked her and drug it out on purpose but I was thrilled to see her just standing there bored as hell. When I was working customer service for a restaurant delivery service, not unlike DoorDash, I had a customer send in a complaint about hair in their food. The hair was sitting on top of the food, I checked their account, and they had one order on their account, which is a red flag. I checked their phone number and find multiple accounts, each other one to two orders, all of them complaining about hair in the food. I deny a refund because the customer has actually used the same identical photo for the last order since they ordered the same thing. The customer tries to argue with me, threaten to never use the service again, typical stuff that they always say. Eventually the customer gives up and ends the call, then immediately tries again. I get the support request. See who it is, then deny the refund again. She ends the call, then tries again. The person behind me gets the call. I tap the person on the shoulder and show them what I pulled up on my screen and that person denies the refund. The next day she calls back and tries again and is outside of the refund window, so the customer demands to speak to a supervisor. The supervisor bans her from the service for multiple fraudulent refund requests. I worked for 8 years servicing communications equipment on site, 5 of those years were as the department manager. When oil was found in our area, we got so busy we could barely even think. Most of my team were pulling 12 plus hour days 6 days a week and we were struggling to hire people quick enough. One day, the CEO texted and said he hired an assistant manager for me, which was something I desperately needed. I was dirty as hell from my previous job and swung by the store to pick him up and take him to one of our sites where he would be doing paperwork. The moment he got in the truck, he immediately started talking crap. He started telling me about how everything we were doing is fricked up and the department manager less than my name greater than was a total moron and he would have my job within a few months. I just sat and mostly listened. He obviously didn't know crap about my industry and every time he would say something wrong, I would try to politely correct him and he'd either backtrack or insist that I was trained wrong. When we got to the site out in the middle of the West Texas desert, he complained about the layer of dust on everything and, ordered me, to clean up the entire site. When I sat down at my desk, the guy continued to beach my ear off about everything that was wrong and chastised me for sitting down at my desk when he told me to clean up the site. So I called for a taxi, filled out a notice of termination, and handed it to him. He looked absolutely shocked. Then he defiantly protested that only less than CEO greater than could fire him. I said and less than my name greater than, right? He sheepishly nodded, so I stuck my hand out for a handshake and introduced myself. I can teach anyone how to service equipment, but I don't have a clue how to teach someone to not be an a-hole. A co-worker friend of mine was flying back from a sales conference in Vegas and he was able to upgrade to a first-class seat. We had this beach sales VP that was on the same flight, she was the snobby, entitled type with a full-time nanny and giant McMansion in the suburbs, and she generally treated people who worked for her like servants. She sees him in a first-class seat as she is making her way to coach and asks him how he got that seat, he used points to upgrade. As people are getting settled in, she makes her way back up to the first-class cabin and asks to speak with the lead flight attendant. She tells him that one of her underlings is sitting in first class, and that she needs to switch with him since she's higher on the corporate ladder. The guy can't believe what he's hearing, but she won't take no for an answer. Finally he tells her she has to go back to her seat, or she will be escorted from the plane. She made a complete ass of herself in front of the whole first class cabin. I had a rough childhood with a drug addict father. My mom struggled to make ends meet and my first job was paying for the mortgage. After several months of working, again at my first job. I finally had some money to spend on myself and decided to get a computer and a decent internet connection. At the time the best internet I could buy as part of a dish combo package. I bought a dish and brought it home to install on the house. During this time my dad was still living at home with us but he was hardly there and my parents had all but separated at that point. 
My dad promptly asked me what I was doing putting a dish on his house. I let him know that I pay the mortgage now and I make the decisions on what we do with the house. I was young but it was a very empowering moment for me. One of my new employees came from a competitor who is, shall we say, not as put together as we are. Her former boss had actually called me to yell at me about poaching his consultants. Which, in and of itself, is weird enough. However, a few weeks after she started the dude rolled up to our office. He had apparently been calling her to get her to finish an analysis for him and she just ghosted him. I went to the lobby to see what the frick he was doing here. He started in on me again and then she happened to walk by. I didn't fully understand the conversation but at one point he literally, demanded, she do this analysis. She just said, or what, and waited a few beats before turning on her heels and walking away. I did the old hand on his back point to the door universal symbol for, leave or a large security man will make you leave. Never heard from him again. Had an old boss who was a complete and total bastard. He was actually my boss's boss, and wasn't supposed to interact with us unless it was through our boss, but he just loved trying to make everyone under him squirm. The company had forced him to go to training twice because of how he spoke to people. One day, I get a call at home from him and he just starts unloading cursing, name-calling, insulting over some technical issue he just found out about. After a couple of minutes, I just looked at my phone and hung up on him. The next day, I get called into a meeting with his boss, who basically wants to know who the frick I think I am hanging up on this guy. I calmly explain that no one gets to yell at me on my time, in my home, on my phone. You have to wait for me to be on the clock to pay me for that privilege, and I'll gladly take that money if I'm busy being yelled at, I'm not busy with anything else. Seem to work. When an unhappy client threatens to go hire a better lawyer, they don't seem to get that this isn't a threat when they aren't paying me. In my first apartment, my parents came to visit, and I said, frick, when I hit my head on the open door of the freezer while standing up from grabbing something from the fridge. My mother said, you can't talk like that in my who, and stopped mid-sentence. I was working as a consultant for a company, there was a bit of a competition between me and this guy, company starts to have some financial issues so I leave and start working for a client of theirs. Shortly after joining they bring in this guy the first was competing with at my old job, he was technically my equal except now I was employed by the client and he was just a consultant. He was trying to one-up me during meetings and my boss told him that decisions are made by the company not the consultants. It felt good. I worked at a Walmart as a cashier, and the assistant manager there was AD. He would insult everybody working there and forced us sometimes to do work above our pay grade. Six months later me and him got transferred to another Walmart that was just built and they needed to pick a manager and assistant manager some random got manager but I got assistant manager, I guess all the complaints on the assistant manager basically gave him a demotion, so one day he was ordering the other cashiers around then I pulled him to the side and told him that if he kept pulling the same crap around he would be out of here. I haven't heard anything from him since. I worked at a movie theater and some customers were adamant that a staff member had stolen their wallet after they dropped it. Turns out that these people just couldn't see and found the wallet once they actually looked for it. They got irate with literally everyone, from the mall security to the managers to the staff. Mall security finally said, get the frick out, and the customers went, you can't say that. This isn't your theater, we're customers. Mall security guy promptly said, this is my mall, and I can do whatever the frick I want. New CEO came to our department on the first day of his work. He didn't have a pass card yet and a lower level employee told him that he can't enter without pass card. CEO got upset and ordered a worker to let him in, but the worker insisted, show me the pass card, or you're not entering. Few days later this worker got a bonus. When I was in high school I worked at popular warehouse club selling computers on the weekends. I was hired by the store manager via referral of a friend. I loved computers and they thought I'd make a good salesman. So my job was to stay in the computer department and sell computers, nothing else. Well, one of the shift managers didn't like that, and started insisted that I needed to go fold clothes for a while. As in, half my damn shift. I told him that the store manager had instructed me never to leave the technology department, but he insisted. This went on for several weeks. The store manager showed up one weekend when both the power trip and shift manager and I were working. The store manager walks up with the shift manager close behind. Store manager slaps a stack of green bar paper. This was a while ago, down onto a shelf and points to some highlighted numbers. He looks at the shift manager and says, do you see this? This is our average technology sales numbers for the weeks you are on shift. See this number over here? This is our average technology sales numbers for weeks you are not. 
At this point, it would be more cost effective for me to simply fire you. What do you think of that solution? The guy stammers and stutters like a toddler caught bullying another kid on the playground. Fortunately, the dude wasn't fired, but the store manager made it clear that when I was on shift, I was not to leave the technology department unless I was on break or there was a fire in the store. That shift manager never said another word to me. One of my jobs is in a hotel, restaurant, per bar. A guest came into the bar after having been refused service at our sister hotel down the road. He was very drunk and had been rude, abusive and threatening to the staff. He insisted we serve him as he was a guest, but we'd already been phoned by our sister hotel so they could let us know what the situation was. We refused, but offered him some water and suggested he go up to his room. He then went on about how he had nearly bought our hotel and that he was practically our boss so we should serve him or he'd have us fired. We refused. He told us he was a very rich man and would tip us hundreds of pounds if we served him. We refused. He was getting abusive at this point, so we again suggested he have some water and head up to his room. He went on to tell us that his brother was the mayor so we should serve him. We refused and told him he should go on up to his room yet again. He then said he was going to the pub across the street but all the pubs restaurants in our town have a barred from one barred from them all policy. We telephoned the other pubs to inform them of the situation. Many of them got back to us and said they had been offered money, been threatened with losing their jobs and also told the story of the mayor. All of the pubs stuck to their guns and refused to serve him. Eventually, he came back to the hotel and went to his room.